Oh, hi, Ines. Thank hi. you so much for being here and sharing your time with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's really an honor. Um, I'm really humbled for being here interviewing you. Um, you are an amazing woman and inspiring role model. Um, so uh, currently you are the co-founder of Explosion yeah. and core developer of Spicy and Prodigy. Yeah. And you started pretty young, really, to the computers and tech stuff. Yeah, like actually we got a first computer when I was 11 and yeah. I don't know, I was just like immediately into it. Like, oh my God. I don't know, I started, actually I made my first website in Microsoft Word. Really? When you, yeah, because I realized you could just, you know, you have the word art and you can write stuff and then yeah. you save it as HTML and then you can upload it to the internet. And yeah. I was like, whoa. Oh my God. That's so that's kind of how I got into <laughs> Yeah. And then I started like making websites. So that's kind of how I got into programming. Um, Perfect. <laughs> that sounds good, really. Uh, but well. Uh, this all the stuff that you're working on uh, are involved of machine learning, NLP, and of course data. So uh, how do you uh, choose the data field? Yeah, it kind, of, it kind of just happened. Like I probably like 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought that I'd be like here now okay. doing this. Um, <laughs> and even yeah, when I meet people who I've known for like a long time and I haven't seen in a while, they're like, wow, you're doing like AI now. That's interesting. But yeah, um, so I don't really have the typical computer science background. So I okay. did communication and media science and linguistics. And linguistics. Yeah, so that's, there was always this angle there. I just didn't yet know how to connect it all. And of course, okay. programming, I was into that. And then when I, yeah, somehow I ended up Um, doing NLP when I met Matt and started working on Spacey and that's how it all came together and I was okay. like wow it's actually a great field where I can combine all the things yeah. I'm into yeah everything match okay yeah perfect nice. it, just, yeah. <laughs> it just worked it just <laughs> happened works, just yeah. happened yeah. Uh, okay well many developers include me um, have used and enjoyed uh, working with Spicy um, that library allows us to build um, an industry ready NLP product and a really good scale Um, well, we want to know like a, a brief story about how that started. Yeah, yeah. So it's so Spacey was initially started by my co-founder Matthew Honnibal. Yeah. So he was working as a postdoc. So he had done his PhD in a field and was writing research code. And he started to realize that companies wanted to use his research code and models in production and okay. want to work with. And he was like, "Wait, no, it's research code. Like, don't." But <laughs> it, I don't. Know, it just it just made it clear that there was really a gap in the in the or ecosystem for a library that was really focused on being productive and doing things for production use. Because everything, all other libraries were research focused, which is important, but yeah, there is the true. need for like fast, efficient processing with an intuitive API. So that's what motivated him to start Spacey. And then I randomly met him and we started working together. And actually he, in the first project we worked on was uh, the visualizer the, with, for the dependencies, which okay. maybe you've seen before. It's kind of, <laughs> yeah. um, And he asked me like, oh, you know, I have this idea for visualizer. Maybe we can work on this together. And I remember like I, I had a linguistics background. I knew what it was and stuff, but it sounded a bit boring to me. So I was actually <laughs> like, eh, I have other projects. I don't know if I want to yeah, yeah. uh, work on this, but I did. And that was kind of the start of working together. And then I started uh, contributing to the library. Um, and, and we are really happy for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, okay. Well, with the next question, uh, what took you from there to create Prodigy and well, how annotation tools help the data scientists? Yeah. So we basically, we, yeah, when we started working together on Spacey and Spacey was already quite popular then, we started our company to turn the project um, or basically our work into a business. And we decided against doing the typical venture funded startup path. We really wanted to be a profitable real company. And uh, so, Well, we had to make money, so we did a few mm, months of consulting. Me. But we already had an audience, so we put a call out there, and we worked for, together with a few companies, um, built some NLP projects, and that kind of gave us a good insight into where people are at, what they're doing. And one thing that always came up is the data. At, yeah. that, at that time, people just throw all the data onto Mechanical Turk, have like some random people label it, and then train their model on it. Even though the data was really, data is the, it's the core of your application. It's what you're okay. training your model on, and people wouldn't really think about it at all. And mm -hmm. Um, it always came back to, well, label some data. And um, we've always had some ideas about like, okay, the tooling around it. And we always thought the tooling needs to be good. Like it's not, it's not, yeah, it's a dumb clicking job in theory, but if you make the tooling better, you make the data quality better. And that's really what inspired building Prodigy, a tool for labeling okay. and annotation, and also building it as a developer tool. Because Perfect. it's something data scientists, the, the hardest part is not, labeling the data. The hardest part is figuring out what you want to label and yeah. how you want to train your model. You try it out, it doesn't work. You try out 10 things, nothing works. Most things yeah, don't work. <laughs> that's yeah. People are like, oh, you train a model and it works. Like, well, no. 100 <laughs> tries before have not worked. And that's, that's the true. hard part. And so Prodigy enables these iterative workflows where you can try out an idea, wow. label, maybe even label yourself, spend some time with your data, understand the data, and then you're going to have better results. So that's, 
that's kind of the history. And we've been very lucky. Prodigy has been very successful. It's used by lots of teams and lots of companies, and it's been what's funding our company and allowed us to stay independent and um, work on open source. That's wonderful. Terrific. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this two project is growing pretty fast and really well. Uh, can you share with us uh, like uh, the short term goals and also uh, how you can what are you waiting for for the long term? Yeah, so one thing we're really excited about is basically making it easier for users to write their own custom models and like really go very deep to the lower levels and build custom solutions with our tools. Because when we started Spacey, people, there weren't many people who really wanted to write their own models. People just wanted to take something off the shelf and run it. Now, yeah. there are more and more people entering the field, more and more people skilling up, more domain experts who are just learning a bit of machine learning and want to build stuff. Yeah. So we want to basically enable workflows where you can, you know, maybe you want to take a predefined component and start with that, but you can also really build like very complex models yourself, plug in your own models, uh, maybe, you know, use some of the cool new stuff like transformer models to build um, more accurate pipelines, um, try out some new stuff. Yeah, and wonderful. we've just recently released a new version of Think, which is the machine learning library that's always been powering Spacey. And a new version really goes all in on the functional programming approach and it lets you plug in models with an TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, custom implementations, and so you can have your model that's written however you want it um, with a type-checked API or like modern Python, and in, or in the future, you'll be able to just plug that into Spacey and Wonderful. work with that and use it in Prodigy, use kind of the new, new end of transfer learning for data labeling. Yeah. All of that will be possible. And that's, yeah, that's probably what I'm most excited about. Nice, that's a really kind, nice of Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, your, your work is really good, but uh, oh. it's, it's pretty awesome, really. But besides <laughs> the, the, the code, we want to know uh, about you a little more. Like, uh, what is your favorite hobby? What do, do, do you do, like, uh, um, when you are away from the computer, when you yeah. are offline? So, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> am I ever offline and away from the computer? I mean, it's really, like, most of my hobbies do actually also yeah. involve, I mean, it's That's like I often differentiate between like programming I do for work and then there's yeah. recreational programming, you know, sometimes I'm like, yeah, oh, it's, it's a weekend, I'm really looking forward to yeah. programming stuff for fun. <laughs> People are like, oh, okay. you should turn off your computer and go outside. You know, Just like, I'm like, no, I'm not even working, I'm having fun. But like, I mean, do, I, I need to get back into that, but I, I, I'm kind of into bouldering, which I, I never knew was such a nerd sport, but apparently, you know, climbing, it's yeah. kind of like climbing without a rope, um, yeah. just like a few meters up. And apparently that's like, yeah, like kind of a lot of programmers do that because it sort of works your muscles yeah. and against all the stuff yeah. you normally do when <laughs> you're hunched over a computer. <laughs> um, so okay, I mean, no, I don't no. know. I like, yeah. it's, okay. <laughs> it's not like I only work. I like music. I like... Yeah, do you like music? Of, what is your favorite, favorite music? Oh, God, favorite music. I mean, I don't know. It's <laughs> that, that's a good question. Um, so I started off, like, as, as a teenager, I would go to, like, 100 gigs a year or something. I was really into concerts. I started off being into, I don't know, more like British indie, indie rock music. That's sort of how I started no. getting um, really into music. And I still like to listen to some of that now. And, but it's kind of broad mix of, like, stuff. But I, I don't get to go to concerts anymore. Maybe I'm getting old. Like, I am. All of us. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay, let's go for the last question. Yeah. Uh, well, well, through the path of a startup and empowering developers with Space and Prodigy, you um, are helping the AI democratization. Yeah. So, uh, what is your thoughts about it? I don't know how you feel it, and also if you have some advices to the developers who is working with AI and how they can um, improve the impact of their work, and also um, um, to make sure a, a way to achieve that. Yeah, so I think one thing that's very important is that it's doing machine learning itself is rarely the point of what you're doing. So I think what's, what matters <laughs> is the deep expertise in like a subject. Like what I think also what we'll be seeing more in the future is people who just know something about a specific domain or subject they're working on and then you know acquire some skills in data science, machine learning, so they can work on the topic they're interested in. Um, and I think that's more important than really just doing machine learning for the sake of it. And yeah, um, I think it's, it's very important to make it easier and make these technologies more available so that, let's say, a social scientist wants to find something out and is able to then maybe use NLP more easily um, to um, be more productive and uh, to do work that maybe they weren't able to do before. Medical, in a medical field, in a legal domain, there's so many fields where actually you need the foundation, you need the domain expertise. Yeah, and then true. everyone, you know, you can always add machine learning on top um, but that's also, I mean, yeah, I, I hate giving advice because advice is usually like bad. Everyone's situation is different and I feel like I'm really not a good person to just give advice that people should follow because it's so different for everyone. But I do think overall it's more, 
it's more important to have a spe specialization in like a domain in, in something real in the real field yeah, and you know and then you can always learn the technology and add that on top but if you just want to be a machine learning expert there's like it, this, it's going to be the future is going to be a bit more limited because it's always about yeah. applying the technology to a problem and you need to know everything about the problem not just about the technology got it well, it's been a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you, thank you so much. You inspired me, <laughs> you inspired us. Oh. And thank you for being here in Colombia. To Thanks for having me. Go I'm, in I've had such a great time Python. already, and I'm like looking forward to the rest of the conference. Yeah, that is a good place. Please, <laughs> I think. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>